few weeks ago I was down visiting a friend of mine and uh, was getting ready to leave he said uh, he had something that he thought I would might like to have and he went in the back room and come out and gave me this little device what this is is a heat kit grid dip meter model GD-1B it's made by the heat kit company in Benton Harbor Michigan um, this meter is uh, been around for a while it, uh, the first meter that Heath Kit had come out with was called the, uh, the GD1 and was produced in 1951 by 1952 they had replaced it once again and then in 1954 they have come out with the GD-1B and this stayed in production to about 1960, I do believe it was. A grid dip meter, or GDO as some call it, is just a high frequency oscillator. It has a range from about 2 to 250 megacycles. Um, there's a microamp meter that is uh, in the circuit of the grid of the, uh, the tube that's inside. Yes, this has a small tube and when it's the correct coil is plugged into the top you can couple this to a circuit and uh, tune through the uh, frequency range depending on which coil you have and when the frequency becomes resonant with the circuit it'll actually uh, change the uh, current in the grid of the tube and this will cause the meter to dip hence why it's called a grid dip meter and uh, some of the older folks back then used to call them dippers on the front dial you'll see that uh, you have different frequency ranges in each step depending on the core that you have inserted and you can rotate this to find the frequency that you're looking for and what this does, this is connected to a variable air gap capacitor inside. Here on the top of the unit, you'll see where the coil plugs in. It can take either a two-prong or three-prong coil. Um, the outside prong is connected to ground. The problem with this meter is that when he gave it to me, he had had it so long, he has no longer has the coils. So, I can't do a whole lot with it without the coils. Not knowing if the meter even still works, and since I do not have the coils, I placed just a shorting wire between the two terminals, which uh, heat kit does have a cord that is like this, and you can use for uh, coupling to radio transmission lines and so forth. With the shorting wire on the top, I've already turned the unit on and let the tube warm up a few minutes. When we turn the sensitivity up, we should get a deflection on the meter. And there we go, the meter is coming up, so the circuit is working. So we know that's a good start, so next thing you know, you know is what's the inside like. Um, since there's a tube, the small transformer and there is capacitors inside. And being this meter was made between 1954 and 1960 it's about a year older than I am so if it's got the original capacitors in it they would definitely need to be replaced on the back of a unit is a switch it's in the oscillate mode and then this side puts it in diode mode to get inside this unit what we need to do is remove these two screws we have the two smooth screws removed so we should be able to pop the back of it off And we'll need to pull this grommet out. And then carefully we'll need to pop the uh, seal from around the front.
this is held in place with little temples on the outside face and goes into the holes. Viewing the inside, we can see our tuning capacitor, our 6AF4 oscillator tube, it's our transformer. This is a dual 20 microfarad, 150 volt capacitor. And this is our sensitivity part in our phone switch. Here we have a view of the power supply on the schematic. Um, this yellow that goes to X, this is your 5.5 volt AC that goes to your filament. Here we have our solidium rectifier. And these are the two capacitors. The only two electrolytics in the whole circuit. Um, since this is a, a dual 20-20 um, at 150 volts, you can replace this with two smaller 20 microfarads at 150 volt caps. The voltage is around 105 coming in off the rectifier and should be around 95 volts feeding the whole circuit. Here we can see where our coil plugs into the socket and this is fed into pin 2 which is the grid of the tube. Here we have a 500 microamp meter with your potentiometer to set it and what happens is when there's a load of frequency comes through the tuning dial it causes a reduction in this grid current when you get a reduction in the grid current it dips the meter and that should be uh, resonant frequency of the uh, part that you're testing So now that we have this meter and we have no cause for it, where do we go from here? Um, we possibly could go to eBay and search around and see if anybody has a set. But I don't know if that would be the best thing. Um, if someone has a set of cores, you would think they have a meter also. So we have to look at other alternatives. I did a Google search and after searching one of the second or third articles that come up from a guy named Jeff Avery on the web and he shows how he winds his cores for the GD-1B grid depth meter and he shows how the cores look and he gives the information that you need and what you uh, have to do to make the cores so for the three basic cores that we'll need to uh, build for 1.8 to 5.4 megahertz we'll need 98 turns of 36 gauge wire or 0 0.127 millimeter 5 megahertz to 14 megahertz we'll need 28 turns of 30 gauge wire or 0 0.254 millimeters and from 14 megahertz to 38 megahertz we'll need 10 turns of 22 gauge wire or 0 0.643 millimeters now I find it best to when you're winding the turns like if it says 10 turns go ahead and put 12 turns on it's a lot easier to take off and bring it down in frequency to fine tune your coil um, if you put 10 turns and you need more wire, then you'll have to rewind the whole coil. But if you put 12 turns, it's easier to take off the number of turns to get the frequency down. The more turns, the higher the frequency going to go. The less turns, the lower the frequency. So searching around the shop here, I was able to come up with a piece of half inch PV C pipe, um, various size enamel coated magnet wire. But I had to go to Lowe's and buy one piece, and that's a three foot stick of uh, 
one eighth brass rod and what we'll use these for is to make the legs to plug into the top of the meter um, the various places you can get this magnet wire um, I know spools of it are very expensive on the internet you can go on eBay you can find some smaller spools um, around twenty dollars or so but uh, there's other places you can find it inside transformers this was somewhere that was salvaged from a audio transformer inside of a CB radio this was a solenoid that was used um, on a piece of machinery I took the solenoid apart and got this nice good spool of wire this is a store-bought roll of uh, enamel coated wire so I cut me three lengths of the PVC pipe roughly about two inches in, in length and I got a piece of wood and I traced out the top of the GD1 where the holes are for the coils and what we've done this for was that the I drilled the two holes into the wood and now the uh, 8 inch rod will fit into it and what we're doing this for is to set the spacing so that your spacing will be correct and match the top of the uh, unit I took my half inch tube and I flattened both sides of it with a little bit of sandpaper the reason for that is that the diameter of the uh, tubing is a little bit wider to accept the holes I also cut off one inch pieces of the brass tubing put them in a drill and used a file to taper the ends of it I then carried them outside to the uh, vise and flattened the other ends leaving about a half inch still round I then went in and drilled two small holes as you can see this now gives me a good fit between the, the two pins and the half inch pipe what I'll do next I'll come in I'm going to drill through the pipe on both sides and I'm going to fasten my pins with 440 screws and nuts um, I know in Jeffrey's um, web page he had glued them on and there's nothing wrong with gluing them on I decided I would uh, bolt mine on instead of using the glue I now have my first coil form made and you can see I have uh, bolted it on with 440 screws I've come about 3 sixteenths from the top and drill one hole and what I'll do I'll insert my wire and run it through and then start wrapping it around to put on the turns that I need before you put your wire in don't forget to uh, go ahead and remove the varnish it's a lot easier to do it before you put it in on this end after the wire is wrapped around I'll then drill another hole here and it'll run to one leg and the reason why I'm doing it here on the side because uh, this one will run over to one leg and then the second hole will come down to the other leg so here I have the first coil made it's the 14 through 38 megahertz coil and I got it wrapped around 10 turns and brought it through and had soldered the ends of the wire onto the pins now since this is PVC pipe you'll need to put some kind of heat sink on here I used a small pair of vice grips and just clipped to them while I was soldering this way it doesn't melt the uh, PVC pipe so the next thing we'll do is install it into the GD-1B and uh, we'll tune it to a frequency and check it on the frequency counter this is just a little loop antenna I use on the frequency counter and uh, it's just multiple turns of wire you don't have to be nothing fancy and it's sorted into a B and C connector and this will be our pickup or frequency counter to check our core frequency so as you can see here I have the uh, 
meter set for 20 megahertz. So we'll put it up to the frequency counter and see what we get. I'm using my old B and K 1801 frequency counter. It's built by Dynascan. So let's see what we got a frequency of. Ah, 20.0108. That is very, very, very close. And I am happy with that. <laughs> so, uh, what you would do is you can spread the core a little bit to get it directly on frequency. And once you get that, you can uh, either put some scotch tape over the core or glue it in place. I will probably glue it in place once I get it. See if I can nail down those last two digits to zeros. But that's very close, and I'm happy with that. Alright, so the next thing I'll need to do is sit down and make the other two coils. I'm not going to do that on camera. There's no need to do on that. You see how I did one. And the rest of them will be the same follow suit on, so uh, no big deal there. No need to bore you with that. And I'm not going to get into showing you how the uh, GDO uh, works. Um, if you want to see that, you can go uh, over to Alan's YouTube channel, W2AEW, and he has a good two on the grip dip meter. He is using, I think it was one of the later Heath kit versions that was fully electronic, no tubes. So uh, that's a that's a good view if you want to go see that. I'll link it down below. So, well, that's another oldie that's uh, older than I am now. Is now back working, and uh, like I say, I'll go ahead and get rest of the uh, coils built, and I'll have this on my bench for further use and testing uh, different circuits. Maybe later on, uh, I think about building a one-two regenerative receiver. So maybe we'll use this to. Uh, get our core frequency right on so I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did as always give it a big thumbs up and if you haven't please subscribe need all the help we can get so until next time we'll see you later 73's